Hi, this is Eric. Welcome to this episode of The Frost Legacy and Far Beyond. I'm going to get to the poem in just a few seconds. I do want to note that the poet intended for the poem to be read aloud. Imagine this poem in the 1850s being uh, performed uh, aloud by professional declaimers in uh, halls and on the stage. Um, the poem has uh, logical arguments. The poem is a fiery denunciation of the hypocrisy and wrongdoing of society, church, and state. I'm going to attempt to give this uh, very magnificent poem a little of the fire and passion that the poet intended to convey. America, it is to thee, thou boasted land of liberty, it is to thee I raise my song, thou land of blood and crime and wrong. It is to thee, my native land, from whence has issued many a band to tear the black man from his soil and force him here to delve and toil, chained on your blood be moistened sod, cringing beneath the tyrant's rock, stripped of those rights which nature's God bequeathed to all the human race, bound to a petty tyrant's nod because he wears a paler face. Was it for this that freedom's fires were kindled by your patriot sires? Was it for this they shed their blood on hill and plain, on field and flood? Was it for this that wealth and life were staked upon that desperate strife which drenched this land for seven long years with blood of men and women's tears? When black and white fought side by side upon the well-contested field, turned back the fierce opposing tide and made the proud invader yield. When wounded, side by side they lay and heard with joy the proud hurrah from their victorious comrades say that they had waged successful war. The thought there entered in their brains that they endured those toils and pains to forge fresh fetters, heavier chains for their own children, in whose veins should flow that patriotic blood so freely shed on field and flood. Oh no, they fought, as they believed, for the inherent rights of man, but mark how they have been deceived by, by slavery's accursed plan. They never thought when thus they shed their heart's best blood in freedom's cause that their own sons would live in dread under unjust, oppressive laws, that those who quietly enjoyed the rights for which they fought and fell could be the framers of a code that would disgrace the fiends of hell. Could they have looked with prophet's kin down to the present evil time, seen freeborn men uncharged with crime, consigned unto a slaver's pen or thrust into a prison cell with thieves and murderers to dwell, while that same flag whose stripes and stars had been their guide through freedom's wars has proudly waved above the pen of dealers and the souls of men. Or could the shades of all the dead who fell beneath that starry flag visit the scenes where once they bled on hill and plain, on vale and crag, by peaceful brook or ocean strand, by inland lake or dark green wood, where the soil this wide land was moistened by their patriot blood, and then survey the country o'er from north to south, from east to west, and hear the agonizing cry ascending up to God on high, from western wilds to ocean soar, the fervent prayer of the oppressed, the cry of helpless infancy torn from the parents, fond caress by some base tool of tyranny, and doomed to woe and wretchedness, the indignant wail of fiery youth, its noble aspirations crushed 
its generous zeal, its love of truth trampled by tyrants of the dust. The aerial piles which fancy reared and hopes too bright to be enjoyed have passed and left his young heart seared and all its dreams of bliss destroyed. The shriek of virgin purity doomed to some libertine's embrace should arouse the strongest sympathy of each one of the human race. And weak old age oppressed with care as he reviews the scene of strife puts up to God a fervent prayer to close his dark and troubled life. The cry of fathers, mothers, wives, severed from all their heart, their hearts hold dear and doomed to spend their wretched lives in gloom and doubt and hate and fear and manhood too with soul of fire an arm of strength and smothered ire stands pondering with brow of gloom upon his dark, unhappy doom. Whether to plunge in battle's strife and buy his freedom with his life, and with stout heart and weapon strong pay back the tyrant wrong for wrong, or wait the promised time of God when his almighty ire shall wake and smite the oppressor in his wrath, and hurl red ruin in his path, and with the terrors of his rod cause adamantine hearts to quake. Here, Christian writhes in bondage still beneath Brother Christian's rod, and pastors trample down at will the image of the living God, while prayers go up in lofty strains and pealing hymns ascend to heaven. The captive toiling in his chains with tortured limbs and bosom riven raises his fettered hand on high and in the accents of despair to him who rules both earth and sky puts up a sad, a fervent prayer to free him from the awful blast of slavery's bitter, galling shame, although his portion should be cast with demons in the eternal flame. Almighty God, tis this they call the land of liberty and law? Part of its sons in baser thrall than Babylon or Egypt saw. Worse scenes of repain lust and shame than Babylon ever knew are perpetrated in the name of God, the holy, just, and true. And darker gloom than Egypt felt may yet repay this nation's guilt. Almighty God, thy aid impart, and fire anew each faltering heart, and strengthen every patriot's hand who aims to save our native land. We do not come before thy throne with carnal weapons drenched in gore, although our blood has freely flown and adding to the tyrant's store. Father, before thy throne we come not in the panoply of war with peeling trump and rolling drum and cannon booming loud and far, striving in blood to wash out blood through wrong to seek redress for wrong. For while thou art holy, just and good, the battle is not to the strong, but in the sacred name of peace, of justice, virtue, love, and truth, we pray and never mean to cease till weak old age and fiery youth in freedom's cause their voices raise and burst the bonds of every slave till north and south and east and west, the wrongs we bear shall be redressed. <laughs>